at just over five pounds, I'm pretty happy to hold this thing up to the camera for quite a while. Although I won't, I'm a little bit out of shape and it is just after Christmas. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and this is the Christensen Arms Ranger 22LR Precision Rifle. And very nice it is too. Carbon fiber tensioned and wrapped barrel. Would you call it wrapped or tensioned? We'll call it tensioned because it is actually tensioned. I'll show you more about that uh, shortly. But what a very nice looking rifle, ultra lightweight, something a little bit different. This is the first Christensen Arms rifle I have had on the table. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. Going to be having lots more of Christensen Arms rifles here on the rack table, so I'm told anyway. But let me just throw out some specs and tell you a little bit more about this rifle and then we'll sort of just get stuck in in the usual rack way so this is the christensen arms ranger i think i've already said that it has a carbon we'll talk about the barrel first it is a carbon fiber tensioned barrel available calibers this one is in uh, 22lr it is an 18 inch barrel it has a 1 in 16 twist they do a 17 hmr which again is 18 inch, one in nine twist with the 17, and 22 WMR is a one in 14 twist. The barrel is hand lapped and has a match chamber and it is threaded with a half inch by 28 UNEF thread. The action is a precision aluminium action. The receiver is black anodized. It has dual ejectors, dual opposing locking lugs, zero MOA rail built in to the action. I think it's built in. Ooh. Yeah, it's built into the action. Just had to double check there. Uh, threaded bolt handle. So you can uh, take off the bolt handle and put something bigger on if you want. I found that quite nice if I'm perfectly honest. It has a Trigger Tech Remington 700 trigger and it takes Ruger 1022 magazines or compatible magazines. This test rifle that I have here, kindly on loan from Highland Outdoors, actually has a Ruger 1022 magazine in. Okay. The stock is a carbon fiber composite, composite rim fire stock. Can you tell I'm reading this off the website? Don't tell anyone. I'm not expected to memorize all this. I've got my idiot board in front of me, AKA laptop. It has, so it's carbon fiber composite stock, which makes it ultra lightweight. It has a palm swell, which I particularly like on the pistol grip. So it makes it, makes the grip kind of fat in layman's terms. So I really, really like that. It's ambidextrous. Again, I really like that. I love ambidextrous stocks because I am a southpaw. It has a flat forend, so you can rest it off a bag if you want. It's got sling swivel studs as standard, so you know you can throw on a uh, bipod if you want. Uh, as you can see in the footage, I was running this off a Coldwell lead sled just to eliminate human error. Um, and give the rifle the best chance possible in accuracy testing. And I've got to say, guys, this thing is damn accurate, okay? Damn accurate. For such a lightweight rifle, really, really accurate. It has a palm hook as well. Uh, it's, I like that, palm hook. I usually call them butt hooks, but that don't sound right anyway. So I think I've resorted to calling them stock hooks, but they call them palm hooks on their website. Ah, stock hooks palm hook, butt hook, whatever you want to call it. No, butt hook is just wrong. So you can basically pull it in, uh, you know, when, you, when you're sort of locking down on the rifle. This one is black with like the gray webbing, which looks really nice. You can get it with, uh, you can get it in tan with black webbing, which would look quite nice. And there are some uh, different camos as well. I think they call it uh, Sitka, I think. The Sitka Elevated 2 and Sitka 
uh, subalpine apparently. That's pretty much it for your specs. Now let's take a closer look at this rifle. Okay, so taking it from the stock end, recoil pad, soft recoil pad. I like that. I do like the soft rubber. Feels nice. It's not too grippy or anything either. I did shoot this sort of uh, out of the Coldwell lead sled as well. Um, and I didn't find it too grippy or, or anything like that. Found it really nice. That is the butt hook, palm hook or stock hook there, as you can see. Uh, nice flat uh, bottom of the of the stock there, you know, that had, you'd easily be able to sort of rest this on a, bag, a rear bag, not a problem. Sling swivel stood there. Then you've got like your pistol grip here and that's that, I don't know if you can sort of see it on camera, probably can actually. See how it sort of swells out like that on the pistol grip? So that gives a real nice, a nice grip. Not vertical either, but it almost feels very sort of targety. So I do like that, really, really nice. There is a, I don't know what angle it is, the bolt throw, but it is pretty low. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a click around, see if I can find the answer to that one. Bolt throw, really nice, dead easy to operate this rifle is. It was so, so smooth to shoot, really nice. In fact, if we're talking about the bolt, let's get the bolt out. Your field strip, if you call it field strip or to take the bolt out, you just press press the side there, like on a most rifles now, they're all pretty standard. But check this out for a small slender bolt. That is so slender. Makes this thing ultra lightweight. I should have actually got one of my CZ457 bolts just to compare it. This is absolutely slim line. This bolt is, they've shaved loads of metal off that to keep this thing minimal. And it is absolutely minimal. Let's just show you. In fact, I'll take the mag out as well. Ooh, there goes the mag. Let's just show you in there. Without the bolt and the mag in. So as you can see, Ruger 1022 style mags. So obviously that lends to a Ruger 1022 style magazine release no hiccups at all with the loading of this rifle like i said everything was ultra smooth such a nice rifle to shoot and then there is your rail there built in zero moa on that rail and then this is where it gets really interesting well the barrel but we'll you know, I'll, I'll talk about the rest of the stock. So the fore end, again, this it's just this real cool black with the gray splattering, real nice text, slightly textured as well. Ultra lightweight, this carbon composite is. Sling swivel stud at the front. And then that is the end of the fore end there. And then the barrel is a carbon fiber tension barrel now screw cut to half inch by 28 unef that's extra fine sorry i was going off camera there let's just take the end cap off or the thread protector that is all metal as well so that is nice but there you can see the lugs there where the barrel is tensioned with the while well, the carbon fiber is is tightened to tension the barrel to really Stiffen down the barrel. That is nice. Guess what that means? That means accuracy. And oh boy, this thing was pretty accurate. Now, let me show you a target. Now, just before I do, I'll just tell you about the scope that this is wearing. This was sent with the rifle, this scope was. So it's a zero tech scope. Uh, it's not one I've used before. Pretty impressed with it though. Um, this one is, oh, where's the box? Let me find the box. I'll show you the box while I've, uh, I've got the outer of the box anyway. Have I got the rest of it? Yeah, I've got, there's the outer, outer box. So it's a zero tech 
uh, scope, lifetime warranty. I mean, that's pretty standard now, isn't it? With scopes, is the insides of the box. Oh, it's all it's all stuff everywhere. A lot nice box. I'm not doing a scope review, but it's it's kind of like a a nice uh, box that you get with it. This is a 4.5 to 27 times 50 MRAD scope, and that is the ret that is in there. So Christmas tree style ret in there. Let me get that over there. So this combination. Ultra lightweight, very, very accurate indeed. Let me just put all the bolt and stuff back, back together. We'll pull the trigger in a minute, but let me just show you accuracy. Now I used quite, quite a variety of ammo with this rifle and I will show you the targets. And I did two, two targets. You have to excuse the state of my targets. Um, but the first one was at 75 yards, okay? And this is one of the best groups that I got. And this was with uh, Fioki. Uh, 42 grain, I think this stuff was. No, 40 grain subsonic ammo. This is at 75 yards. Five shot groups. Oh my God, check it out. Now, obviously, I zeroed this rifle first, you know, and got it nailed down. That is a group that I am seriously happy with, 75 yards, really, really happy. That was with the Fioki ammo. I'll put that there. Next one I used was some Winchester, got some old Winchester stuff. 42 grain, subsonic max. That's that stuff right there. I'll put that there. That was the group I got with that. Now, before I swapped ammo, I did, well, when I did swap ammo, I'd put, I think I put a mag of that stuff through it onto a gong first, and then I shot my target. Pretty damn impressive. All right, I got a flyer there. That's, yeah, it's to be expected. Then I used good old blazer, plinking ammo. Yeah, as expected, the groups opened up a little bit. So there's the blazer stuff. Okay. Blazer, those those ones, those three targets are all blazer ammo. It is what it is. I tried to lock it down as tight as I could. That's a slightly smaller group, but eh, it is what it is. Then we went out to 100 yards. So it's not, not a lot further, but it is what it is. And the first one I used was uh, SK Rifle Match, which we're probably all familiar with. SK Rifle Match, five shot groups again, no wind, 100 yards, boom. I am happy with that. Happy with that. SK standards. Again, that's when I switched ammo, I put a mag through onto uh, a gong just to get the barrel accustomed to that ammo. I mean, does it really matter? People say it does. I tend to think it does, you know, just get the, get the rifle sort of, you know, used to that ammo. SK standard plus. Opened up a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna lie, guys, these are my best targets. I did do some real crap targets, okay? And I thought, no, I'm gonna do them again. Really lock this rifle down as I can. And I did. And this is where this thing blew me away. So, Ely Match. Now, this is real posh ammo, okay? So, I think the next one up from this is like your 10X. So this, is, or maybe it's probably about the same. So this is the posh stuff. Again, switched ammo, put 10 rounds through of this, lock this thing down, and oh my God, what? Yeah, that is a, a group that I am pretty proud of. Pretty proud of. This thing is more accurate than my Tika T1X that I've put in a chassis. Or at least it seems to be. It seems to like, maybe I'm using the wrong ammo in my Tika, I don't know, but 
That is pretty impressive, guys. But a variety of ammo used just to sort of, you know, give this uh, give this rifle a fair old chance. And it certainly performed. It certainly did perform. Now, let's give the trigger a pull just to see what it is doing. I'm just at the other end of the rat cave getting a snap cap. Oh, God, why do I not prepare for these videos i don't know you guys wouldn't have it any other way would you it's how i roll it's how i roll right and let's give this trigger a pull see what it was doing because it was a real nice trigger i've got all bits over my right here we go so show you the mag by the way just in case you don't know about um ruger 1022 mags or the mags that are compatible with this christensen arms ranger these are 10 shot rotary magazines. You can put a 15 round Ruger 1022 magazine in or a 25 round, even a drum mag. Mm, why didn't I do that? That would have saved me a lot of ass. So I could have just loaded all these different flavor ammo up into one magazine. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it works better if you like load it the correct way like I was not doing. So yeah. Ruger 1022 magazines, really reliable if you keep them clean. Like I said, it is a rotary magazine. So as you push each uh, round in, it does actually rotate. So it's almost like a, think of it as a revolver in there. Pretty cool, reliable steel lips. These things ain't gonna wear out anytime soon. But let's give the trigger a pull. Let's just chamber this snap cap because it's never good to, uh, to dry fire a rimfire rifle because Obviously, the uh, the firing pin strikes the rim, so it's never good. So let's give it a pull. See what she's doing. Single stage trigger, three pounds nine point five ounces on the trigger pull. That is a nice trigger. In fact, you know what I'm going to say, guys. I've got to remind myself what it was like. I do, I have actually got to remind myself what it's like because this was a nice trigger. Single stage, like I said, very, very crisp. Let's just chamber that again. Oh, I've got a feed issue. There we go. Let's just give that a pull. Oh yeah, that's a nice trigger. Extraction, really good. Obviously better with brass rather than a used uh, snap cap, the right one I'm using there. But... Like I said, I had no issues whatsoever with uh, with using this rifle. Yeah, admittedly, if, if this was my rifle, I'd be running the bolt a little bit more lubed and wet. I do like to run my bolts wet and my guns. I don't know what it is. I just, I just think metal and metal needs to be wet with oil. Don't know, it's, it's always been ingrained uh, in my head that has, I don't know why, but is what it is but um yeah super smooth action could be smoother with a bit of uh, oil like i said but oh my god the accuracy of this rifle i really wanted to take this rifle to my local club to do some real sort of real serious target shooting but i've kind of run out of time with this rifle i've just up to my eyes in reviews at the minute uh, but wow Real sort of real world shooting. I was, as you can see, shooting this off the back of uh, uh, an off-road vehicle, you know, a platform on an off-road vehicle, shooting this off my Coldwell lead sled, which to be honest, I prefer shooting like that standing up. Um, you know, I'm getting old, my back don't like shooting prone. You know, comes with age. But yeah, what a very, very accurate rifle. I am seriously impressed with this. Feed it the right ammo, find it the right ammo. Um, and this thing is gonna seriously, seriously, oh, spray that again, right? This thing is seriously gonna, um, you know, perform, it really is. Let me show you the box. So the box that you get is a cardboard box. Christensen Arms box. What do you get in there? Well, that's pretty much it. You get the rifle. Um, you get 
the bolt as well, which is good of uh, Christensen Arms sending you the bolt. Uh, you get some bits and pieces here. You get a sticker, uh, warranty stuff and whatnot. So nice separate box. Uh, sorry, I'm off. I'm off camera, guys. Nice separate box for the uh, for the bolt. Uh, you even get a bit of gun oil as well and some ear defenders as well. How cool is that? So that is a nice touch. Okay, the manual. I've got to say, the manual's pretty good. Okay, so nice and big, easy reading. I've got to go for every page for you guys. Of course I have. Decent diagrams as well. All your sort of your usual do's and don'ts. Nice, like I said, nice and easy to read. Are there any exploded diagrams in there though? <gasps> oh yes, well slightly exploded. Nah, okay, it's decent, it's decent. So that is the box for the Christensen Arms Ranger. Just throw that out of the way. So yes guys, pretty impressed with this little rimfire rifle. It's got a some decent specs. There's no doubt about it. Decent specs, carbon fiber tension barrel, carbon fiber composite stock. It takes Ruger 1022 magazines. Some people will be like, oh, I don't know about that. Doesn't bother me. I've used Ruger 1022s for, phew, what, 15 years plus. Uh, I've never, ever had a problem or an issue with a Ruger 1022 magazines, with a Ruger 1022 magazine. As long as you keep them clean, you ain't going to have a problem. You just ain't. But yeah, I like it, guys. As you can probably tell, uh, I am a big fan of uh, rimfire rifles. I do like this. I think this will appeal to um, target shooters and hunters. I think this is a great all-round rifle. It's light enough to take out in the field. It's durable to take out in the field, but it's good looking and accurate to shoot at the range competition work. So best of both worlds. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. That is your rack and load review of the Christensen Arms Ranger. Yes, it gets thumbs up from me. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Stay subbed and if you are not subbed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It gives me a nice warm fuzzy feeling. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. That is Rack and Load. See ya.